Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about your bird's respiratory system, how it functions, why it's sensitive, as you may have heard that already, and also ways to keep it nice and healthy. Now, as I just mentioned, birds do have a very sensitive respiratory system, which you may or may not know, but if you do know that, it possible that you don't know quite why it is so sensitive so I thought I would go over that today I'm going to put a graphic on screen now just to explain a little bit more about the anatomy of a bird's respiratory system because it's very different to mammals like us so birds have two lungs that is very similar to us however they also have nine air sacs which are all around the body and this is part of the whole respiratory process so the lungs of a bird are actually rigid they stay completely still they don't expand and contract like our lungs do however the nine air sacs that are in the respiratory system do expand and contract and that's how the air moves all the way through the lungs and round the air sacs so the lungs being rigid is a really good thing now this means that there is no mechanical pull on them like there would be with our lungs because they expand and contract because they're rigid it's great for two reasons the first one is that there is a greater surface area for gas exchange in the lungs uh, bringing oxygen into the body but also the walls of the lungs can be very thin which means that oxygen can get transferred into the capillaries arteries and veins all throughout the system very very easily now this is obviously very efficient for things like flying which of course most species are built for however there is a slight drawback which means that if they do breathe in any toxins in the air they're going to get into their system very very quickly due to this really efficient gas exchange within the lungs now if you haven't seen my video yet on common dangers for pet parrots you may not know that there's actually lots of toxins in our home environments that are very dangerous for birds because of the fumes that they can give off. The main one is going to be Teflon, so that's non-stick cookware. Things like uh, frying pans, waffle makers, toasty makers, uh, you can even find it in some hair dryers as well. Anything like that is very dangerous for birds because the Teflon when overheated releases a exceptionally toxic fume. But it's not just Teflon in our homes it's dangerous to birds cleaning solutions cleaning products that you find typically in the supermarket again release off chemical fumes which are very toxic to birds candles like smelly candles they're no good either air fresheners wax melts perfumes aftershaves and also if you're a smoker as well all of those things are exceptionally dangerous but that is not an exhaustive list there are lots of things unfortunately so i always say that when you introduce a bird into your life it's very much a lifestyle change you cannot have any of these things in your home so you have to make changes which of course all add up to lots of money when you have to replace absolutely everything to make sure that you're keeping these little beans absolutely safe so now I've spoken about the functionality of the respiratory system and a little bit about how it works, I'm also going to tell you some of the most common things that can go wrong with your bird's respiratory systems. So we've already mentioned toxins in the home, again that's one of the common ones. One I thought I'd also point out is self-cleaning ovens. It's not a big thing in the UK but I know in places like the US it's a big thing to have a self-cleaning function in your oven. That is exceptionally toxic, please never use that in your home if you have a bird. So the kind of next issue I wanted to talk about are blocked nostrils, um, especially in powdery down birds like cockatiels, like chimpanzees who are being very noisy today. I find that their nostrils are more likely to get blocked because they have a lot more kind of dust and dander coming off of their feathers and uh, sometimes when they're preening it kind of gets stuck in their nose. Normally when it is just dust and dander or a little bit of feather they'll usually get it out on their own so it's not such a big deal but if it was something like a seed husk then they would be a little bit more concerned and maybe consider even a vet visit just to make sure you get it out correctly because I've seen a lot of people say, oh, I saw my bird had something stuck in its nose and I went digging around in there and I couldn't get it out or I wasn't sure what was going on. And I wanted to talk about that because there's actually a structure just inside the nostril of a bird called the operculum. And it's kind of like a little fleshy tissue flap, if you like, just inside there, which can help with keeping out dust and debris. But sometimes, in a certain position it goes in it does make it look like your bird's nostril is blocked so obviously you don't want to be going digging around in there trying to get that out because it's attached to your bird so please never go into your bird's nostrils it's not a good idea again i'm going to talk at the end about ways to keep your bird's respiratory system in great condition but if you think your bird's nostril is actually blocked by something then i think a vet visit would be more sensible than trying to get it out yourself in addition to this, quite often dry air causes a lot of blocked nostrils or nose problems. Um, birds, generally speaking, need a very humid environment. It's where most of them come from. And generally in our homes, it's not that humid. I mean, in the UK, it definitely is. We live in a very humid um, environment. So we don't have to worry about humidifiers. But say, for example, in the US and Canada, in certain different places, you may need to actually have a humidifier for your bird to keep that humidity level up because it is essential to have a higher humidity level for your bird to have a fully functioning 
respiratory system. Now one of the telltale signs that there might be something wrong with your bird's respiratory system is if they're breathing funny. Now that means if you can hear a noise when they breathe, if their tail is bobbing, if anything is unusual with the breathing that doesn't look normal to you, that is an essential vet visit trip. Now please don't leave me comments saying your bird is breathing funny, just go straight to the vet. I am not a vet, I have got over 12 years of experience working with birds, but I cannot treat your bird over the internet. You do need to go and see an avian vet. And if you need help finding one, please let me know, I can help you find one, but do just get your bird to a vet to get that checked out. Now another sign that there might be something wrong with your bird's respiratory system is if they have any kind of nasal discharge that could be anything wet around the nose, any crust, anything like that shouldn't be appearing around your bird's nostrils. Another sign of a respiratory infection as well is if there's any discharge from your bird's eyes. People think, oh, it's just an eye infection, but actually all these systems are interlinked. So sometimes if your bird has something wrong with its eyes, it could actually be a respiratory infection. But again, regardless, they need to see a vet. I would like to point out, however, that one or two wet sneezes sort of every so often is actually kind of normal for birds especially if you know that they have had a bit of a blockage in their nose from a bit of feather for example when they do sneeze that out there will be a little bit of moisture it's not unusual but if there's excessive moisture if there's any kind of crusting or wetness around their nose that is the point where you're going to need to take your bird to an avian vet to get that treated next point i wanted to talk about is aspiration which is not very nice but it's important to cover it this is where water gets into your bird's respiratory system and it is very very serious the way that this normally happens is through incorrect showering or bathing with your birds forcing your bird to bathe and then it ends up getting water in its respiratory system or from aspiration from feeding a baby chick because you have to hand feed them in a very specific way otherwise it goes down the wrong hole and then all this food goes into your bird's respiratory system as well as with medicating your bird with different medications through a syringe has to be done very carefully as well so if you're not sure please talk to your avian vet please don't just do it on the fly uh, because you need to make sure you get it right to make sure that your bird is going to be safe. Something that a lot of people also don't realise is very serious for your bird's respiratory system is incorrect restraining. You need to know how to restrain your bird properly. Now I spoke at the start about the air sacs, they are all over your bird's body. So you do not want to be holding and restricting and restraining that body because then your bird is not going to be able to breathe. So I've got my trusty little buddy here because I didn't want to restrain one of my birds for no reason unnecessarily. Um, so with any kind of bird, you don't want to be doing anything like this. You do not want to be restricting the wings, the chest, you don't want to hold them like this either. Any kind of restriction all around the body is not a good idea. Now I'm not going to show you how to do it correctly because I don't want to be responsible for people not following my instructions correctly, but I will leave a link to a vet video of an avian vet showing you how to restrain your bird correctly, which is usually this kind of position. But again, go and watch that video if you want to learn how to do it or speak to your own avian vet so they can show you how to do it properly. Because if you do it incorrectly, your bird is not going to be able to breathe. And obviously that is exceptionally serious. So make sure that if you ever have to be in a situation where you need to restrain your bird, whether you're doing it with a towel or whether you're doing it with your hands, you have to know how to do it properly. Also leading on from a point I said earlier, if you happen to run air conditioning quite frequently or central heating as well in the winter, then it's quite possible that you are going to be drying out the air in your home. So you may need to have a humidifier. You can get cheap gauges on places like Amazon on the internet and you can find out what the humidity level is of your home and you can know how to raise it as well. So now we've talked about some of the ways that things can go wrong with your bird's respiratory system. How can we prevent them in the first place? How can we keep our homes nice and safe for our birds? The first way is of course not have any of those toxins in our environment. If we eliminate those then we know that they are not going to be a problem for our birds. But leading on from this as well, we want our environment to be very clean for our birds. Obviously they're very messy but that doesn't mean that we can't keep on top of the cleaning, making sure that we are getting rid of dust regularly and of course keeping on top of their droppings and any other mess that they decide to make. That's going to have a massive impact on your bird's respiratory system. Also, where possible, when the weather is nice, it's really important to try and air your home to get some fresh air into it. Now, of course, doing that means that you have to have your bird having in-cage time, but that's absolutely fine as long as they've got plenty to do, then it's not a problem to have them in their cages. Uh, but make sure that they are, everyone is safe and in their cages before you open any windows, um, and then you can get some fresh air in, and that's gonna be great for them. Now, I already mentioned that you may need a humidifier depending on your climate, where you live, but we don't want our houses to be really stuffy with kind of trapped air. We do want to get some of that airflow in, but if you do find that when you know, you're know you just going about your daily business and your home is very dry, 
then you may want to introduce just a little uh, humidifier in your bird's room just to keep everything running smoothly. Now an essential item for any parrot owner is having a bird safe air purifier because of course we can't have the windows open all the time and we need to have something to keep the air nice and clean in our homes. So we use a Levoit air purifier. I will have a link down in the description to the one that we specifically use so you know you're getting a bird safe one. Anyone you use does need to have a true HEPA filter and it should not have an ionizer function or you should be able to turn that off. So make sure that that's the kind of air purifier you have. But if you wanna see the one that we have, I'll have it linked down below for you. So a way that you can kind of give your birds a respiratory system a little treat, give it a little top up, is to actually take your bird into a steamy bathroom. Now not all birds will like to bathe with you. I don't like to take my birds in the shower with me. However, I can run the shower really hot, shut the door, let it steam up. Then I can turn the shower off and take my birds into that steamy environment without any kind of chemicals or anything like that present. And they can just breathe in all of this steam. That's a way of getting your bird to have um, some humidity. It's great for trying to help with any kind of blocked nostrils as well that's from you know a bit of dust or dander. That's fine too, but it's also just brilliant to um, help your birds sort of open up their nostrils, get their respiratory system running really nicely um, and it's just really good for their skin as well because having kind of a, that kind of humid environment over their skin is really great for it. You also want to be bathing your birds regularly. That could be a few times a week. Sometimes for our cockatiels, they prefer just twice a week. Our conyers like to bathe every single day, but you need to make sure that you are offering bathing in a multitude of ways so you can work out how your birds like to bathe. And if they don't like to bathe, you have to train them how to do it. And that's absolutely fine. It's not uncommon. I do have an entire video all about bathing, bathing training, and the different ways you can offer it to your birds. So if you'd like to watch that, I'll leave a card at the top and a link in the description. And finally, if you want to kind of spice things up in your home, you want it to smell really nice, but you want to do it in a bird safe way, I do have a recipe for a bird safe air freshener on my life hacks video. Again, I'll leave a card at the top and a link in the description, but it basically means that you just boil some water when your birds are obviously safe in their cages and away from the kitchen with some orange peel, some cinnamon, cloves, all natural things you bring to the boil and let it simmer. It's gonna make your house smell absolutely incredible. It's gonna smell really festive as well, which I absolutely love. But the most important part is that it's completely bird safe to boil up these natural ingredients to make your home smell really nice. Now that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful learning a little bit more about your bird's respiratory system and how you can keep it safe. But of course, most importantly as well, how to know if something isn't quite right too. If you have any questions on your bird's respiratory system or anything else to do with birds, please let me know down in the comments as I would love to speak to you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you aren't subscribed already, it would be incredible if you could consider subscribing to my channel for more parrot care content. And maybe even consider liking the video if you enjoyed this kind of content as well. But in the meantime, Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.